If there are one stock that could crush NVIDIA, it's this. Today, we're covering the stock that could shock Wall Street, a stock many experts believe has more future potential than NVIDIA itself. There's no better company that's really changing, I'd say almost the technology landscape, than what Carp and Palantir have done. If you think NVIDIA is the king of AI, you're only seeing half the story. Because there's one company quietly building the software that every AI model, including NVIDIA's, will rely on in the future. And that company is Palantir. By the end of this video, you'll understand why some investors think Palantir could outperform NVIDIA over the next decade, even if NVIDIA stays the world's number one chip maker. And stay with me, because in a few minutes, I'll show you the Palantir project almost nobody knows about, the one that could unlock trillions of dollars of real-world AI demand. You made a strong case for Palantir. What's your case for Palantir? It's the messy of AI. I mean, look, it just comes down to, like, this is a company that when it comes to use cases, no one could compete. Now, you could say it started off on the government side, but for all the work that we've done, that's why there's a name, like, the haters, they hate it, 12, the spies at 50, yelling from the mountaintops at 100. It continues to be, in my view, what's gonna be a trillion dollar coming in the next two or three years. Now look, is this super expensive today? Of course. But what happens when commercial bookings is 5X from where they are today? What Palantir has, no one else could compete with. I believe, you know, when, when you think about who could be the next Oracle, the next Salesforce, mm -hmm. I believe it's Palantir. That's why our view is you can't just look at it in terms of what it trades at for next year. You gotta look at what over the next three to five years, what could this look like? What, what's the big differentiator as you see it? Their technology, in terms of their core data set, their algorithm when it comes to AIP, mm -hmm. no, no one matches. I mean, it, it, we call it the Gretzky of hockey, the LeBron or Curry. Just keep going on I mean, and so however you want. But but I could tell you when I talk to CIOs that are ten times smarter than me, that's really how they got on the radar a year and a half ago. And I believe now what they're starting to do. But look, you talk about behind the velvet ropes. Benny off six months ago. He's like, oh, is my name on the list? Trying to get into that AI party. Benny off last quarter got in. He's in. He's on the dance floor. Of course, Nadella has been on the dance floor from the beginning, as well as Godfather of AI Jensen. But now others are joining the AI party. It speaks to our view. This is going to be a broadening out in terms of the AI spend, as well as the AI winners. NVIDIA chips are the engine of AI. But Palantir is building the roads, the electricity, the buildings, the entire city where AI actually lives. NVIDIA sells hardware, which is massive. But Palantir sells the software layer that governments and the biggest corporations on the planet depend on. They don't just use AI, they run. Military operations, intelligence analysis, emergency response, nuclear energy, global supply chains, healthcare systems, all on Palantir. And here's the part Wall Street loves. Once Palantir software enters a system, it never leaves, recurring, Sticky, irreplaceable. And in a minute, I'll show you why this stickiness gives Palantir an advantage NVIDIA can never match. But from all of our work, 70 to 80% of every AI use case Palantir is ultimately involved with. And you know, when you put in, like, you know, you're talking about in terms of the AI trade, pieces of the puzzle, I think this is going to be a trillion dollar market cap in the next two or three years. So, in terms of the actual quarter, US commercial business, that's re that continues to really be the story here because, you know, as you start to look, this is going to be ultimately a one, two billion dollar business. Oh, yeah. That's why I think valuation just over the next year, you miss what I view as really a transformational, almost historical growth. I know, but that, that's a lot of hyperbole around a story that you're obviously positive on. I mean, I'm talking like, what the, the obviously the expectations are though you need to see like the growth rate yep. like where, how high does the growth rate have to be relative to where the valuation is relative to a stock that's already up 170 yeah. plus percent year to date like the new orders like yeah. what kind of growth do they need to show there the superlatives aside what about the stuff that matters I, most I, I think u.s commercial business is really what i view as it could be an 80 90 100 percent grower and I think when you start just to put numbers around that, I mean, it's got this one that was 25, 50 million that I believe now could be on a trajectory over the next 12 months to, to be a billion dollars. So when you, when you actually put that together, that means the valuation is one where you go from 
two, three billion of free cash flow, what could ultimately be seven, eight billion of free cash flow in the next few years. That's how you're going to justify the valuation. I think also with what CARP talks about, not just on the government side, but on U.S. commercial. Well, the com commercial is 45 percent of their sales. Yep. At, at this point. Does that take the onus off of their reliance on government spending? Yeah, I, I'd say 45 percent of revenue, 80 and 90 percent of the valuation. So when you think about government business, even though it's shut down and, and obviously that could be a little dent, I actually think on the federal side, that's actually going to be a beat relative to all the high AI projects that we're seeing from a priority perspective. But what the street focuses on here, it's all about commercial. It's all about this company essentially disrupting the whole software landscape. And that's essentially what Cart and Palantir have done. It's so interesting, too. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a retail-loved almost a culty angle to this stock. NVIDIA is a four trillion giant. Palantir, barely 400 billion. If NVIDIA doubles, great. If Palantir doubles, it's still tiny. Palantir doesn't need to be NVIDIA to 10X. It just needs to become the backbone of the AI world. And as you're about to see, that future may already be happening. Because what I'm about to show you next is something almost nobody knows, but it could define the next decade of AI. How, how do you view that? The fact that retail is so highly engaged with this yeah. name. Look, I think retail has been well ahead of institutional. I mean, you know, I could go back and then you've talked about the last few years. Institutional hated this name, hated 20, despised at 50, you know, yelling from the mountaintops at 100. I do think institutional has missed what maybe retail saw in terms of the commercial business, in terms of AIP, that was really transforming what Palantir is going to be over the coming years. I do think institutional now warming up more and more to it, because the reality is that you cannot just dismiss what they're doing with essentially no direct sales force. And I think that's, that just speaks to the, the demand that you, we're You have a thought on that, Michael, the, the, this cohort, this yeah. now powerful, uh, probably more powerful than ever. Sure. Uh, cohort in this market that supports stocks like this come heck or high water? Right. I mean, it's obviously, it's this almost self-generating enthusiasm for a very select character of stocks. So I, I pointed out for, year, for a couple of years now, Palantir and Robinhood were the same chart. And that just sort of shows you they're just drawing off the same kind of self-reinforcing mechanism of, hey, we're all here loving this stock. We still love it. We love it more because everybody loves it. And I'm not saying that that's without basis, because Robinhood's actual business has been growing extremely rapidly as well, as is Palantir. But, you know, Dan, if you're right about $8 billion in free cash flow years down the road, it's a $500 billion market cap right now. That's a 1.6% free cash flow yield. That's Microsoft today when it's over-investing in CapEx on this year's numbers. So, I mean, that's, that just gives you a sense of how much credit Credit has been given to Palantir in advance, given the trajectory. Now, look how much, I mean, you're giving them a ton of credit. You're talking about a trillion dollar market cap. Because, well, right? look, my view is that you're going to have three trillion that's going to spend, be spent in the AI revolution. When you've got software use cases, 30, 40 percent of that is going to ultimately be software. Now, how much does Palantir get versus Snowflake, versus Salesforce.com, versus Oracle? But again, it's pieces to the puzzle. If you look, not just on hyperscalers, but Palantir, they're a core piece on the AI use case. And I just think what CARP's doing is unlike anything we've ever seen in software. NVIDIA is incredible. It will dominate hardware for years. But Palantir is something different. They are building the AI nervous system of the world. Hardware can be copied. Chips can be replaced. Competitors will come. But government AI infrastructure? That is almost impossible to compete with. This is why some investors genuinely believe NVIDIA may power AI, but Palantir will control it.